people are beginning to change. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. In this verse, there is one word we are going to focus on today, and that is incontinent. What does incontinent mean? In this context, incontinent means lacking in moderation or self-control, especially of sexual desires. I can confidently say that one of the devil's final plans and tactics in the last days is to instill into the hearts of men and women a lack of self-control, not just in the area of sex, but in other areas such as drugs, alcohol, food, work, finances, shopping. The enemy is aiming to ensure that people become slaves to passion, slaves to their unrestrained lusts. And one of the ways he does this is through society and social standards. Society is constantly changing and moving further away from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and moving closer to the standard of the God of this world. People are beginning to change. They are moving further away from the instructions of the Bible and closer to the God of this world. Just because the world says something is correct, that does not mean the Bible agrees with it. When you look at things happening in the world today, you will see the evil of human beings on the surface of the earth. Some people do things that are sinful by the standards of God, and you wonder why anyone would do this kind of evil. You see killers, you see idolaters, you see thieves, you see fornicators, and when you look at all of these, they all have one thing in common, and that is lack of self-control. Every sin committed in this world is because of just one thing, lack of self-control. If you see anyone who steals from someone, it is because they cannot control themselves. They cannot control the urge. If you see an adulterous person, it is because they don't have the spirit of self-control. They cannot take their minds off the opposite sex and they end up committing sexual immorality with them. Self-control is an important thing in the lives of people and without it, evil will abound. Lack of self-control is something which we shouldn't take lightly. You see, people who know they shouldn't do something, they know right from wrong, and they even know the consequences of the action, but yet they still do it. You know sleeping with that person won't add anything good to your life. You know after sleeping with them that you will be upset with yourself, and you wonder why you did it, but yet you still do it. Why? A lack of self-control. You have bills to pay, but you prioritize clothes shopping, clothes you don't need. Why? Lack of self-control. The devil knows what this means. He knows if he can get the people to lose the fruit of self-control, it would be easier for him to lure them into evil. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.1 that perilous times will come in the last days. We are in the last days and we are in the times when all the things that are listed in 2 Timothy 3.1-5 are happening and we can see them happen. The Bible says people will be without self-control incontinent. It means people will let loose self-control and they will have nothing to keep them in check. If people lack self-control, it means one thing, lack of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit starts yielding fruits in your life, one of the fruits is self-control. Having self-control is also the same as allowing the Holy Spirit to control your life. Self-control is the result of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. Galatians 5:22-23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Every car has its control, i.e. the steering wheel. It will not be possible to drive a car if the control is not present. Consider a new car that has no problems. The amount of time the car stays in good use depends on the one who controls the car. If someone with no license and no experience drives and handles the car, there might be an accident and the car would be damaged. If a professional with a license handles the car, it would work fine and no damage would occur soon. Our lives are like the car. We need someone to be the driver. 
we can choose to be the one driving our lives ourselves, we can also let someone else handle our lives. The distance our lives can go and the achievements that will come to us will depend on the driver. One question you should ask yourself now is, who is controlling my life? The question is not rhetorical, it needs an answer. Is your flesh controlling your life or is the Holy Spirit controlling your life? How can I know if the flesh is the one controlling my life? We can find this out by simply examining our life. Is your life demonstrating the works of the flesh which are found in Galatians 5, 19 through 21? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are living an adulterous life, your flesh is in control of your life and not the Holy Spirit. If you are living an idolatrous life, your flesh is in the control of your life and not the Holy Spirit. If you are living a hateful life, your flesh is in the control of your life and not the Holy Spirit. If you are living a sadistic life, your flesh is in the control of your life and not the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit controlling your life or is your flesh controlling it? The mistake you and I make is allowing ourselves to be the driver of our lives. We don't know anything. We are very limited. We cannot compare ourselves with God. Lack of self-control will push you to say yes to fornication. It will push you to say yes to adultery. It will push you to say yes to pornography. It will push you to sin in your anger. Lack of self-control will push you to make dumb decisions. Without self-control, your life will be blown by the wind, and wherever it lands, is where your life will be. Paul knew the consequences of not having the Holy Spirit in his life. He knew that it would be a disaster if he could not do what he ought to do. Before, he complained about being led by the spirit of sin that the things he does not want to do, he found himself doing. Romans 7, 15 through 17 KJV. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This is the exact thing happening to people in the world right now. The devil is using the power of sin to strip people of self-control. They are pushed into doing things they don't want to do. They want to say no, but they can't. They don't want to masturbate, but they lack self-control. They don't want to watch these unholy things on the internet, but they lack self-control. They don't want to fornicate, but they lack self-control. They don't want to commit adultery, but they lack self-control. They don't want to get into a fit of rage and break stuff, but they lack self-control. They don't want to spend money on unnecessary things, but they lack self-control. They can't say no. Many people don't like what they do, but they cannot stop doing it. This is the devil taking control of their lives. Do you know how much evil is going on in the world? Do you know the things that people are doing in the world that is destroying themselves? Not everyone wants to do these things, but the devil, the power of sin, is making them do it. Are you lacking self-control in your life? Have you allowed sin to take over that you don't even know what you do anymore? This is a perilous time, and the devil is moving mad, making sure that no one has the power of self-control. You see pastors doing all sorts of immorality with the church members. With church members, not even with people outside the church, but with church members. Have you not seen all the scandals of famous Christian leaders in the last two years? All of their scandals have one thing in common, and that is lack of self-control. Lack of self-control is now in the pulpits of our churches. Lack of self-control is in the church. What should you and I do in a time like this that the devil is killing self-control in people? 1. Pray for the Holy Spirit of God Prayer remains one of the solutions to our problems in life. Hannah was barren. She prayed to God and she got a child. Prayer carries power in Christ. If you pray for the Holy Spirit, you will get the Holy Spirit and you must get the Holy Spirit. 
Anyone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit at a time as this will find it hard to reject things that they don't want to do. Look at the people who are into sexual immoralities. Look at the people who kill people for money. Not all of them love it, but they found themselves doing it because one thing is missing, and that is self-control, because there is no Holy Spirit to give it to them. God is not stingy with self-control. He will give it to you. Why are you scared to ask God for it? Ask Him today and develop a closer walk with the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to work in you and through you. Self-control is one of the biggest blessings you will ever receive from God. Why? Because it will stop you from making dumb decisions, decisions that will ruin your life. God is looking for those who will stand in these last days and say they will never lose their self-control. God is looking for those that will be able to say no to any form of evil and immorality around them. It doesn't matter what it may pay you. It doesn't matter the fame that will come with it. God wants those who can say no to evil. Can God trust you to be part of them? God is raising people who will choose holiness above every other thing. He is raising people for himself that will never allow themselves to be tossed around by the devil. Can God trust you to be a part of these people? Follow Christ and follow the right path. The answer to the sin you are struggling with is a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit.